folks, uh, if you don't mind, uh, could you stand up on your feet there a wee minute, everybody, please? And if you want to get up on your tiptoes or your two hands, about an inch away from each other. As fast as you can, three times. One, two, three. <laughs> right, just have a seat. What has that got to do with performance analysis? Absolutely nothing. I just want to make sure you don't fall asleep during my presentation because it's very warm in here. And uh, excuse my husky voice, I have a bit of a bad chest at the minute, so uh, you're going to have to put up with that for, for a few minutes. Uh, the premise on, on why I'm here, and I want to be clear on this uh, from the start, on my links with uh, performance analysis. As director of sport in Holy Trinity, a number of years ago, we qualified for sports specialist status, which gave us the wherewithal to try out different things and uh, explore different avenues in sport. And I'm glad we ran into these men. So from a school point of view, all our teams have been using it in recent years. Uh, I was brought in as a coach for the Throne Under 21s last year and we, used, uh, we brought in the performance analysis system as well. So I'm speaking today to you as a coach. I'm not a performance uh, analyst. The fellow that does the work is actually Martin McGear. He's a colleague of mine in, in Holy Trinity College. So he's, he's expert with technology and, and with, with data, but I'm speaking to you from a, a coaching point of view on how we were able to use the data and the information to try and help um, our players and, and to help our team. Uh, performa, performance analysis itself, it's, it's hard to believe, but there's still a number of people and a number of different codes who think, what's the use? What's the use of spending the money and, and going down the line? I have a pair of eyes myself. I don't need anybody to tell me what's going on. And, and there's, there's people like that, and there's some people need convincing. In this case, there are, there are events and games, there are maybe half time where there's information available to let a manager know, to make him aware, you are not winning this game because of A, B and C. And if that manager refuses to take on board that information and ignores it, chances are they're going to lose. And he'd be a foolish man. So there are a number of people in, in all ranges of sport, like this man here, and probably when you've made the effort to come here and, and you believe in it, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted. Right, from a, from a throne point of view, uh, the first thing that we had to decide was, right, we, we need to get a system in place that managers, uh, players and backroom team are comfortable with. Uh, and that's more or less the, the system that we use. The very first thing, obviously our performance analysis is with the team. Uh, 24 7 he attends all games he's very much uh, part of it and it's his remit is to get the videos of the game to download them to send them out so that the players have them as quickly as possible after after games what we do we will sit down with him as a management team and we go through the the key PAs and I'm, I'm going to go through this in a wee minute in uh, the next couple of slides we use the live game tag as well, and I'll show you an example of the type of information that we get during the course of a game. Post-game analysis, uh, very important. Um, I think Chris did, did mention about uh, uh, the best time and, and when to deliver feedback. No later than this week, <coughs> I got a, an example from a young lady who plays sport at a high level. Uh, at university, Gaelic football, and the coach immediately after the game decided to give her his opinion on her performance during that game. It was after a tough game and he went through her and as a result of that you had a, a high performance athlete in tears about uh, where she was going to go uh, regarding her, her game. So is that the right way to leave someone? So. In my opinion, a lot of the post-game analysis is not immediately after. Players maybe are upset or annoyed, they're tired, they're fatigued. And maybe coaches are wound up as well, if things haven't gone their way. So post-game analysis is best given when, when the coach is in the proper mindset and when the player is ready to take on board what you have to say. Uh, from a coaching point of view, I take on all information about games from the performance analysis because that's going to determine my 
my coaching for the weeks ahead. And I'd be a foolish man if there's an obvious trend or there's a weakness in our team, an obvious weakness, not a, a, an opinion, but a fact from a number of games we played. And I choose to ignore that and, and don't do kick passing in training or don't do shooting in training or don't work on, on kick outs. So the coach has a very important role. If this is going to be useful, you've got to translate that and you've got to work on the areas that you've gathered from, from fact, not from opinion. And hence, we, we plan our sessions. Players, uh, this is great now in that after uh, games, players get to watch themselves right away, the following day. And I know when I was playing, we didn't get that uh, opportunity. I would have been some player if I had been able to go through every game I played. But <laughs> they, they get the opportunity to do that now. And I was to Dermy about it earlier. I'd say 95% of, of Gaelic players that I've experienced they want to, they want to learn, they want to get better. They enjoy watching themselves to see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And the feedback to player is so crucial and I'll, I'll give you a good, couple of good uh, examples of when it's really worked for us. So, uh, the key PAs, the live game, half-time stats. Now, I'm just giving you an example of one game. Uh, so at half-time, we'll be, for the, Know what the story is with kickouts, how we're doing kickouts, how many went short, how many went long, what percentage of that did we win. Turnovers could be the stat that you want to focus in on. It just could be shots from play, scoreable freeze. So that there's game specific targets. For one particular game, maybe we could have identified one player in that position and we wanted to close down his input on the ball or the amount of possessions that he gets. So we could just have that player. Target. So at half time, we know exactly how many possessions that player had. So this can vary, or in some cases, teams and, and managers like to keep it more or less the same for every game. But that's very much up to uh, the, the, the management. Also, simple targets. Players like to be given challenges and, and goals that, that, that they have to hit. So again, they can set the targets. They can be two or three if you have a list of targets. Uh, not that they become worthless, but it's best having only two or three. You could have ten, and half the players aren't listening after you call out the third or fourth target. So if they want to identify two or three real targets, uh, it could be winning their own kickouts again. It could be shots from play. They've set themselves a target. Right, 60% of our shots today are going over. We are being wasteful in front of goals. So again, blocks, turnovers, forced turnovers, something to, to get them geared up. Uh, and, and give them a bit of motivation that they want to hit that stat. And you know that if they hit them three or four stats, or three or four targets at half time, the chance is they'll be in a good position. Post match uh, an analyst would tag and upload the game onto the online area. Players, coaches can log in and watch the game, encourage player feedback on performance. Last year, last year we actually didn't have a, a system in place whereby players could give their feedback uh, on, the, on their own iPad. But now, this year, moving forward, we are. On a number of occasions, players will come forward to you and will give their opinion or ask a few questions. But now, they're going to get the chance to write it down. So we'll have, after a game, uh, some of them may not decide to do it, some of them may. And we, we will see trends, maybe, that, that's something that the players have, have picked up as well. So it gives them uh, a chance, uh, we better responsibility as well to get involved. And players can see individual clips for the game and the management prepare for the, the, the feedback session. Um, the feedback session, I've already given you the, the example of when not to give it, in my opinion, when not to give a feedback session, especially if you're going to be uh, offer some criticism or give the, the players something to think about. Um, for ourselves as a team, we want to, to, to meet, say, if the championship game was at the weekend, we'll try and, and have it on a Thursday or Friday night, whereby sitting down and we're reviewing the game, reviewed the targets that were set, how we played as a team, uh, and there'll be no more than 10 or t 12 clips. As a coach, when you watch a game, They'll be up on 30 
for this is Gaelic, 30 or 40 things, points that you could pick out, clips that you want to speak to them about. Because there's that much going on. There is that much going on. But you can't do that at the team session. If you start to go through 30 or 40 clips, you're, you're going to lose the players. So you have to select the trends or the theme or the 10 or 12 most important things that, that they're going to learn from. Okay? Uh, the analysis, it can be tactical, it can be technical, it can be related to the opposition uh, as well. Um, styles of play, maybe an opposition has set up in a certain way and we need to be aware of it. We didn't adapt it too well, show them examples of that so that if we meet a similar team again, then you're, you're going to be ready for it. As you can see, we will now have online feedback this year. Feedback can be one-to-one -one or in collective group or in small groups, defenders forward. Uh, the best example of how this system worked last year was we had a, um, a match, uh, a pre-championship competition, and one of our key players, he was playing in a very central position, uh, we as a management decided to take him off after about 21 minutes. Uh, when he came off, he didn't look that happy, nor do you blame him. So he came to us after the game and says, look, Jesus, you didn't give me much of a chance there. What? You know, didn't even get 25 minutes. Uh, right, we'll, we'll speak to you on Tuesday night. Have a, have a look at the clips. Ask Marty to, to just pinpoint the clips you're involved in and he'll get them on your phone and we'll have a chat on, on Tuesday night. So that was it. He came back to us on, on Tuesday night and he was, he was ready to take on board what we had to say, but we didn't have to say anything because he was involved in, in four players and three, three of those players he lost possession and his man they scored two points. So for a player in a key uh, sector of the field to get four possessions in, in 21 minutes wasn't good enough, that's not what he was there to do. So once he had seen it, uh, he wasn't an angry man, he was a man ready to learn and he, f he fully understood what, why he was taken off and he knew what he was going to have to work on. He knew the target for possessions for a player in that sector of, of the field should have. So for us, that could have been, and he was a, a key player and a, and a great fella. That was a, a situation where it could have been led to a bit of aggro, led to somebody coming to training in bad form, uh, leaving us in bad form. But thanks to Marty and a wee bit of technology, it, he was able to see it himself. All right, so feedback working well, definitely. Uh, the individual reports or the uh, stats that the, the, the players can go through, again, you'll find some boys aren't really too interested in this. Some boys are. They will set themselves uh, individual targets for uh, possessions, say, for good tackles, maybe. Uh, for the amount of hand passes they make, they might have wee targets that they want to set. That, that's up to them. But they can't say that they didn't get the information. And they can't see, they, they can see what other players are doing. How come every match our midfielder always seems to get his hands on so much ball? What, what is he doing with it? It's there. It's, it's in black and white. So again, it's, it's good for individuals. And again, from a team perspective, that's what you're, you're looking at. That's what your stat report will be. Kick out so many you want clean, breaks one, shorts, and, and so on. How can performance analysis Im impact on coaching? Uh, again, as a coach, you look at games and you look at players from a technical point of view. Is there anything that they're doing that you can have a word with that will improve their game? In this case, with a free taker. Uh, Danny McNulty was our free taker. There was aspects of his technique we felt were flawed and we could watch him you know, go through all the frees that he's hit this year. Why did, he, why did he keep kicking them wide to the one side? Was it because he was leaning back? Was it because he was getting too close to the, the ball when he's striking it? There's 101 things that you can analyse with players catching the ball, their hand passing and so on. So as a coach, <coughs> is there anything that you can do to help out an individual on, on, on their style of play. The likes of kicking out and, and uh, free kicks. The Scottish fullback, he was a record holder, point scorer, is it Chris Patterson? 
Uh, I recall his, him playing his first game whereby he was asked to hit the penalties. The, the penalty kicker for Scotland was injured and he had hit them. He was shocking. He, his run-up was terrible. He, he didn't look like a natural uh, striker of the ball or that he wasn't comfortable doing it. The years after, he became an all-time record point scorer in Scotland. Why? Because of his technical analysis, he got somebody to work with him. He worked on his technique and there was games, I don't know, five or six games were in a row where he didn't miss. And that's just from getting the right style, analysing it and then putting in the effort and doing it. So some things like that can be really worked on. Golfers, snooker players, the amount of sports that uh, proper analysis can help you and if you're prepared to put in the work, the, the results will come. The other end of it then, of course, and Gaelic football at the minute, there's so much going on. There's 15 players on, on teams. Uh, management has changed uh, immensely in this past three or four years in, in Gaelic. It's not players going out playing in set positions. You know where they're going to be and what they're doing. There's a radical change. So that means that we, you have to be up to speed with and players have to be up, with spe up to speed with what's going on. And a lot of them aren't. A lot of them can't see what a certain team is doing or where their players are playing. And you, you can ask some of them at half time and they haven't a clue. So they need, to be, they need to be up to speed with it. And the best way to do this is performance analysis. Show them examples in, in, in games, get them go, uh, to go through it. Simple thing, if this fella thinks that he's going to go through the middle here, he's wrong. He should be getting the ball back out, where it switch the play and show them where the space is. If there's a lot of bodies in one area, th then there's got to be space somewhere else. Okay, so that's the tactical side of it. And you, as a coach, have to be fit a way up how much time you spend on the tactical and how much side time you, uh, you spend on the, on the tactical analysis of the game. Seeing the bigger picture, uh, if you want to change that, Joe. Uh, seeing the bigger picture, again, for, for that example there, we had one player in our panel last year and we had 233 clips in and before training, uh, before meetings, he was asking questions, he was a sponge, what about this, what about this, questions, My, uh, did you see what, what I'd done, did you see this, uh, 233 clips we had built up on him, uh, so he's now on the, he's now on the senior panel uh, and I'd imagine he's going to be there for a long time because he wants to learn, he wants to take everyone on board. And again, that, that can only be good. Um, the, the example that I'm going to give you about the bigger picture as well, with some players, what about the headstrong player? That player's great because he, he takes everyone on, on board. Uh, Dermy will know the fella that I'm going to talk about that, that I had in my, in my own club, that he was always right. And there's plenty of coaches here who have <coughs> players, be it soccer, rugby, whatever, and he's always right. No matter what you try to talk to him about, he's, no, but, 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 all right? So, and, and my case was that every time he got the ball, he had a shoot. And he felt, well, well why did you not pass the ball to, to such and such? Well, sure, uh, I'm, I'm a far better finisher than he is. Aye, but, but he was in a better position. Aye, but he probably would have missed. So, what, what we did was throughout the year, at the end of the year, we just got all his clips of him shooting, and his, his return was just over 30%. So over the course of all our league games that year, if he had 100 shots, he only scored 32 or 33 in, which is a, a poor return. So by him sitting down and watching it all, I wasn't going to engage or try and persuade him. Persuasive com communication was long gone at this stage. He had to figure it out himself. And by doing that and sitting down and me saying to him, but him watching, again, this was fact. We weren't making up the, the, the video footage. Uh, and it, it turned out, again, he, he got on, I'm not saying just because of this here, but, but it did help. He didn't shoot as much. He did get on uh, to the county team. And he was more instrumental because it wasn't all about him. So, again, from, from a coach's point of view, there's times just let, and the, the silence bit that, that Chris was on about, there's times you need to be silent and, and let them figure it out for themselves. So by providing that information, you, you're doing that and it's up to him, it's up to them to take it on board. 
I wanted to give you a few uh, examples of uh, this one. I don't mind. Of because uh, we have a Tipperary man here, and uh, he said he wanted a bit of footage of Tipperary, so I'm I'm, I'm going to do that. How how we use performance analysis coming up to to, to the under twenty one. I'm, I'm only selecting one area that we we had a good look at, and that that worked for us. The Tipperary men round the middle, and the two or three games that that we've seen, they were. They were brilliant at, at getting round the D. They were very hard to penetrate. And any teams have got scores that they're either from distance or, or coming in the side. We wanted to look at the, their goalkeeper. And he had all his three steps back and is the short on. Okay. So, again, if you notice from that, and they were all the same, he would take it two or three steps back. And if he was kicking to that side, it took him nearly another second to get around to, to, to kick it there. So we had identified that could be a chance to, to push up. Even though it's a quick or a short kick out, he, he had no right foot. Okay. Second thing, and, and kick outs are a very important part of, of Gaelic football. He had a trend whereby he'd done the same thing all the time, the, the three steps back, if the short wasn't on, then he, he, he kicked it out long. But when he kicked it out long, it was always to his left side of midfield. Now, he, he had good fetchers. In this case, Conlo Reardon. But I, I could have showed you three or four examples where they all went off his left foot out to that side of the pitch. So, we mature uh, three steps, the short, not on, and our full forward, we've spoke about it, where's the ball going to go, boys, going out to that side there. So, we made sure that we had a presence around the breaking ball on that side of the pitch, and to attack them going down the wings. So, uh, we can say, and the players will tell you, we have talked about that. We have talked about the goalkeeper, what he likes to do, his same pattern. I don't know if he was aware of it himself, but, but we certainly were. Our full forward, we knew where the ball was going to go, and if we got a chance to, to attack them, we only won the game by a point. So, the use of performer, if you want to change that back again, Joe, the use of performer analysis, would we have won this game if we hadn't have? done a bit of research, if Marty hadn't got all the information on, uh, on, on the opposition, definitely not, definitely not. So that's, that's just one example and I, I could go through a lot of different, different things, but that worked. Uh, you all know who that man was and that was during their, their World Cup game, he's not playing Candy Crush, he was up um, analysing the the games and passing on information to the performance analysis. So he was uh, scrums and looking for styles of play from the opposition. This is a player, he didn't have to be doing this, but he, he wanted to spot things. He wanted to be a help where he was. And in terms of Gaelic, again, that's the modern, modern day Gaelic football will, will be exactly the, the, the same. And in time, Managers, I have no doubt, are, are going to be based like, like the rugby managers with a screen in, in front of them, going through replays, identifying tactics and strategies from, from the opposition, and more managers will, will be up there as well. But our professional players are doing it because it, they know the importance of it, and they see the bigger picture. This is a recent survey carried out by uh, Area Sports Council, and. Sinai, and I'll, I'll pick out three facts for, for you. Again, I'm preaching to the converted here, the very fact you hear, but 79% of coaches, these are all coaches from a wide range of sports that were questioned, 79% of them said that performance and analysis was essential to develop tactics. 86% of them would like more training on how to use it more effectively. 86, 
percent. I need some of the best coaches in the country in, in different sports want more training on it. And the biggest one, 94 percent of them are actually already using performance analysis and would like to use more. So uh, that speaks to itself or speaks for itself. And the last point is that it can only help you. There's no guarantee that success is, will be at the end of it, but everybody wants to, uh, to get a wee bit of success at the end of it, and you like being winning something. So uh, if you want to get there, don't be foolish, keep an open mind. Thank you. <laughs>